James in the back of the seat. That's in. Get the circlips located in the groove. There's a small gap uh, in between the burring and the circlip uh, when we put the top cover on. This will press the outer plate down into position so the circlips hitting the burring. You just have to pay attention to the top locator. Top lines with top and you also have the small main shaft oil drain hole which drains the oil from the shaft back to the sump. Don't want to apply too much torque onto the bolts because we're going to be drawing now the burring down to remove the circlet gap. So it's nice, steady, even pressure. Check the gap. Still have a few millimeters. Okay, now you can feel it's a steady stop. It's a, you can feel it's located. We just do a visual check just to ensure. So the burring is now sat firmly on the circlip, no gap. You can also verify by zero gap between the plate. Okay, so next we're going to install the, the labyrinth oil seal or the scroll oil seal so we have a uh, the new cover there we can tell if this is worn during overhaul because the ends the the peaks of the seal will be flat so you normally on a new one it's about looks about a millimeter wide you're looking for okay we want to uh, install this with plenty of lubrication we don't want to dry seal so when the compressor is started for the first time you have plenty of lubrication on the brush we also have a spring here as well that just sits behind. There's also a top sealing surface on this oil seal, so it's a good idea just to put a bit of lubrication around that face, because that's the face that's going to run against. Springs inside, we're going to fit the bush over now. Okay, we have to ensure that the, the top plate is level because this can kick over with the burring and it will reduce your gap. Uh, if you have problems installing the oil seal, just check the level. Very important to ensure a, a nice tidy cleaning uh, work area. Make sure there's no dirt anywhere and just keep on top of the, uh, any oil spill. O-ring on the back plate. Plenty of grease, remember a little bit of lubrication on the front face as well just for the help the oil seal. So we just have this spring tension we're forcing against, you can see the, the plate. 
Yeah. And again, just fasten the bolts in a nice cross pattern so we're not putting excessive torque or stress on the plate. Ensure it goes down square. That's all fastened, all secured, ready for that. Okay, so the next step, we're going to install the locking ring, the tab washer, using the correct tool. Try not to use chisels, pin punches, hammers. Uh, the ring doesn't like it, it'll be destroyed. So always use the correct tools. Okay, so the tab washer, you can see, it's got a little locator on the front here, which needs to be located down on the shaft. Yeah. Okay. And then dry, no Loctite, install the ring. Okay, so we're just going to tap the, uh, the locking ring round now till it lines up with the tab. Okay, that's pretty tight now and we've got a, a tab line. Pin punch, you can just locate the tab into the groove. Only one of the tabs will line up onto the locking ring. Uh, all the other ones are slightly offset, just to, to just to make sure you will always have one tab in the group. Okay, now it's time for a uh, spin over. All the, all the drive bearing. This is slightly different. It's split into two. We've got the outer race and we've got the inner race with the roller and the cage. The inner race with the roller in the cage is what we need to heat up next and it goes on the end of the drive shaft as so. The outer race will then have to be chilled slightly and the housing slightly warmed up which we'll show you in a moment and we can install that in the housing. Okay, okay so we're just going to heat the uh, inner race bearing up now to 125 maximum. We're going to check it with a calibrated instrument, ensure we're not going to go over temperature. Okay. Right way open. Okay, so the inner race now. The, the cage and the balls, uh, 125 degrees, no more. Uh, bearing numbers facing out, good engineering practice. We're just going to let it cool down on the shaft now, and then we'll install the uh, oil pump drive gear. Okay, so now we're ready to fit the oil pump drive gear uh, on the end of the main shaft. You just have to make sure that there's no uh, debris or any bits of Loctite that have been left on the inside where we're located on this end of the shaft there. This has been gone through the parts wash, there's no debris anywhere on it. Ready for installation? Okay. Okay, so installation just goes onto the end of the shaft, three holes line up. And we're just going to add a little bit of Loctite onto the end of these. Okay, so we're just going to apply the torque, fasten up the, the, the 
three volts. The M10, the torque in newton meters is approximately 50, 55 newton meters. Okay, for the next task, uh, we've dropped the gearbox horizontal. Uh, you can do it in a vertical position, but from experience, this is by far the best way. Uh, and it's also ready to drop the main shaft in. So for this task here, we're going to install the outer race and the bearing. Uh, to, make this e to make this easy for ourselves, we can either heat up the casting, and we can also chill the outer race. That's currently in the freezer, so I'll, uh, I'll go and get that out now. Okay, so this has just come from the freezer. We put it in a bag just to protect it from any other frost. We don't want it turned into a big ice cube when it's in there. So numbers out. Just gonna get a copper hammer. It's nice and free, it's still chilled out, it's still able to turn in the bore, that will eventually expand with the heat of the ambient. So now we need to install the circlip into the groove, make sure it's located properly. Okay, so we have the circlip, it's all nice and clean, Some good circlip pliers, and important as well on this task, let's put the safety glasses on. Okay, so that's closed up now to maximum. You can hear the click and just make sure it's located properly into the groove. Okay, so we just want to reposition the lifting sling now, uh, getting ready to lift the whole main shaft and gear assembly back into the gearbox. So we're just moving around the M16 eye bolts into the pressing holes. We have to ensure that the lift is very square. Now we have to install the o-ring for the back plate on the gearbox housing. We're going to install it with a fair amount of grease so it keeps the o-ring in place as we install the main shaft. It's very useful in this situation that uh, we just added a chain block. You need a crane with a small rate of travel because when we put the main shaft into the gearbox, we're going to be bringing it down in small. 
Okay, so we're just going to add a small amount of lubrication before we install the bearing. We're just going to lubricate the outer race. Not too much. You can also add a little bit of grease, but using the oil that the bearing's going to be running into is a better. So we can also use some M16 studding as a guide, uh, just to help us maintain a, a, a true level as we're locating the bearing into the outer race. We can locate these anywhere around the face. have to ensure that the, the, the top is located on the top and you can see there it's described. Yeah. Top. Okay Alex. Go go down a little bit. Yeah. Oh. Right, use the chain now please. Yeah, you just keep going in that side the top. Now we want to get a feel as we're getting close to locating the burring, we're just going to start slowly rotating the shaft. And this motion just helps locate the roller inner burring to the outer race. So you just want to go keep going down. Beginning to locate now the two bearings, you can feel the resistance coming through the shaft. So just one link. Okay, another link. Another link. Another one. Another one. That feels like it's located well. Pop on. Another one. Yeah. It's better to keep the shaft speed slow, you don't need to spin it round fast. But it's given me a nice feel of if there's any problems, I know straight away. We're not waiting before the rollers have popped out and there's burring damage. Okay, down a link. Is that down all the way there, Al? No, no, it's going back in the tree. Can you just take it back a tiny, tiny bit for me? So you take the weight. Okay. Okay, down. Yeah, down to the take the weight off. Okay. And then just to check. Once it's down, there's no gap that the pull gear still rotates nice and freely. No lock tight required on these bolts, just nice and tight. And then again, after every activity, we just check the rotation of the shaft. So there's no problems. It's time for a coupling installation. Uh, the coupling we're going to be installing, it's a tapered coupling on the tapered shaft. There's one crucial thing to remember about this, you do not heat the coupling up. It always goes on cold. Okay? Just also want to check for any damage or wear on the key and also on the keyway itself. I'm 
going to tighten up the, uh, the coupling main bolt now. We can lock the coupling up to stop it rotating in various ways. One of the ways I use is we can put a bar through the coupling and we can lock it on the intercooler bracket. And this way it just holds it nice and steady. Yeah. You can make it a one man action. Small bit of Loctite. Okay, so these are locking screws, uh, grub screws for the coupling pins. Uh, whenever we get the chance, uh, if we're doing an overhaul in the workshop, it's a really good idea to take these out, tap through the holes, beat blast the, uh, the screws, get rid of all the rust. It becomes quite a difficult task on site when we're replacing the pins. If these holes here, they're all rusted up and sometimes they snap off, shear off. So help your engineers, you can make it nice in the workshop. You can see the way the, uh, the coupling halves will go together. So the motor coupling half will go through the centre here and locate through the coupling rubber. And then you can see with the grub screw, it'll be locating In the groove, it stops the bolt from vibrating loose. Next, we want to uh, install the new oil sump gasket. Now, this is a part that's quite neglected during overhauls. Many engineers don't remove the oil sump cover, it's not really seen as a, a, a sump as such, like the smaller machines, the three and the four. Uh, but it's crucial that this is done if you want to have a machine that's not leaking seeping oil everywhere. Let's go the extra mile. So a new gasket, just apply with a small smear of grease around the flange. And just stick the gasket on the face. For this exercise, we've bead blasted all our bolts uh, because we're doing the video, uh, but, and this is going to be a detailed block for one of our overseas customers. Uh, but again, if you have extra time on site, just go the extra mile, try and clean the bolts down, make sure they're all good, and save your time when you're building up. There's no particular way this cover goes back on. Uh, you, as a general rule of thumb, as it came off, goes back the same. This hole is just for a plug. The last task we have to do now is just to fit the sub plug with a new doughty seal. Again, make sure the doughty seals are replaced. These go brittle over time and just a simple washer can create such a big hassle for your guys. Okay, so we're just preparing now to lift the gearbox back into the upright position. Uh, we've adopted a slightly different method for this uh, from our experience over time. If we use the allotted lifting points to lift up in the vertical position, it tends to swing the block hard over. So 
So if we lift from the two holes on the intercooler bracket, you will see it's a lot more controlled and we can sit it down a lot. So we're just traversing the trolley over just so we get a nice squirrel lift as it comes up. I'm um, just putting some uh, wooden uh, battens across the side of the sun just so it sits nice and flat on the pallet. <laughs> Okay, so now we're just going to install the other covers for all the uh, open ports for the, the, the gearbox. Uh, new gaskets and everyone, and make sure every gasket face is thoroughly clean so there's not going to be any leaks created. There's no need for any sealants or anything. So now we're going to install the oil pump. This has already been overhauled, uh, so we just need to install two new O-rings, a small amount of grease, and then we can fix it onto the gearbox. Okay, so the main O-ring. Yeah. So this oil pump has been previously overhauled. Uh, we're just going to install it now to the gearbox. There's a video for the overhaul on the oil pump. When installing the oil pump into the gearbox, we just need to ensure that the gear mesh is uh, properly meshed up. You can see there, if you leave the top cover off, you can have a good inspection inside. And we just make sure that there's no burrs, no rust, nothing that's going to damage the O-ring and create any leaks. We know this one's perfect now because this is, as explained previous, it's been done for the video, so it's a lot of details been going on. Okay. Just be careful drawing the oil pump in if it stays out a little on the O-ring. Just only apply a small amount of torque on each bolt. It's a cast housing and you can see where the, the bolt holes are, the mounting holes. They're quite exposed, they stick out, quite easy to crack. So if this is not meshed in properly, don't just start winding the screws in. Always use a visual inspection inside. You can see there we're quite happily with the gear mesh. So there's no problems there. We can draw this in now nice and square. Ok, 
Okay, so now we're happy with the oil pump installation and the gear tray and mesh, we can put the inspection cover back on, of course, with a new O-ring and with some grease. All the bolts again have been cleaned down. Okay, and then just tighten it up. So we're just going to install the cover. This is for the old photo cell oil level sensor, which is not used anymore. So this would just be plugged for this instance. Again, new gasket, 